In this video, I'd like to look at two things, non-void methods and a methods return type. And a methods return type is going to be found in the method header or where a method is created. And you can see that in the calc 101 class, in the method called addV, we have a return type of void. And what that means is that no data will be returned to where the method was originally called. And in this case, that's the main method. So if we were to run this program, it would print out 20 plus 10 equals 30. That would all happen inside of the method and nothing would be brought back to the main method. Now let's compare that with a non-void method and it would start by looking like this. We have public and the return type, which I've intentionally left blank, the name of the method add r, and again, the two values that we want added together. The return type depends on what data type are you bringing back to the program. Well, if we're adding two numbers together that are integers, and we're going to sum them up, and that sum is going to be an integer, it makes sense that the return type would also be integer. So that's what's going to go there inside of the method header. Next, we're going to do exactly what we did in the void method. We're going to add together num1 and num2, but what's different is the next line, which is simply going to say return, it's a keyword, and sum, so it's going to bring back to the location where it was called the sum of n1 and n2. So that's really the difference between a void and a non-void method. Void, nothing goes back to the program. Non-void, something is going to be returned once the method is finished. And let's see this play out in code. What I've done is I've changed the code in the main method just a little bit. You'll see here that I'm printing out void method and non-void method. And I'm using the void method here. And right down here is where I'm going to use the non-void method. And I've differentiated them by calling this one add v and this one add r. So if we were to start this program, we'd start in the main method. Then we're going to initialize the two values, n1 and n2, to 20 and 10 respectively. We're going to create an object of the Calc 101 class, and it's going to be called math. Then we're simply going to print out void method to indicate what happens below is going to be what our void method is going to do. And our void method is going to send the two values, 20 and 10, over to the addV method. Once over there, the method is going to add the two numbers together and then print out 20 plus 10 equals 30 and it's going to print it out using that system out print line statement. Next, it's going to come back to the main method. Now that the call to math.addv is done, it's going to continue on and it would print out non-void method in our output below. Once that's accomplished, we're going to call the addR method. And the addR method is going to also send 20 and 10 to the method inside of the Calc 101 class. Just like the last method, it's going to add the two numbers together. So 20 plus 10 is 30, but the difference is going to come with the keyword return. What it's going to bring back to the program or what it's going to return to the program is the value 30. And so that value gets sent back to the main method, but there's a problem. The main method doesn't do anything with it. You'll see that 30 was sent back, but there's no system out print line or anything to handle it. So therefore, the program would be done and our output would be void method 20 plus 10 equals 30. And our non-void method would say absolutely nothing. This is a common error when first learning non-void methods. So the way that we would fix that is to simply say system.out.println and then we would have the method call right here. So the method call would bring back 30. And you say, well, that doesn't look exactly like the void method. Well, we could make it look like it if we wanted to. We would just say system out print line n1 plus n2 equals, and then we have the method call inside the system out print line statement. And so now our output would look exactly the same. 20 plus 10 equals 30. A void method will have the keyword void inside the return type, and a non-void method will have some kind of data type inside of the return type, and it will also have the keyword return somewhere within the method. Now that we know how a non-void method is constructed, let's look at some examples of how it can be brought back to the program. So I have three examples for you, and I'm using the exact same method from the previous slides. The first example is what we did in the last slide, and that is we can bring back math.addR to the program inside of a system out print line statement. So it will actually do something when it comes back to the program. And what would that do? It would print 20 plus 10 equals 30. Next, what we can do with a non-void method is 
In this example, I've assigned it to a value. So math.addR, whatever the value would be, which we know would be 30, would be assigned to sum, and then it could be printed out. So this would print out 30. And in the last example of how a non-void method could be used, I have the non-void method inside of an if statement. And so if it equals 30, which we know this to be true, it's going to say the sum of the numbers is 30. So those are just three examples of how a non-void method can bring information back to a program. Let's say that I wanted to bring information back to a program and I wanted to use math.addR without having to put n1 plus n2 in front of it, but I wanted to get this output, 20 plus 10 equals 30. Could we do that? Well, sure, but we're going to have to make some modifications to our method. But first, before we do that, let's see what it would return now. And what it would return is 30, and you can see that these two outputs are not the same. So in order to get it to look like this, what we're going to have to do is create a string that contains all of this information. And so that's exactly what I do in the return statement. I say num1 plus a concatenated in plus sign, num2 plus equal sign is sum. And hopefully this is familiar to you from the previous slide. But if I try to run this right now, unfortunately I'd get an error. And the error is I didn't change the return type. This used to be an integer, but now it's returning a string. It doesn't matter that it's taking in two integers. What it returns does not have to be what it takes in. So instead of returning an int, I want to return a string. So I'd simply change this to string, and now my program would work. If I were to run it, it would say non-void method 20 plus 10 equals 30. And in this example, I just really wanted to point out to you that different data types can be used here what you take in does not dictate at all what is put back by a particular non-void method. Now that we have a better grasp of return types, I want to talk to you about different ways this return statement can be used. We've already seen the first option, and that is to use a variable here. What this method is returning is a variable, and the variable would just be 30. We actually have other options for this particular statement here. We could just return the number 100. So no matter what is passed to it, the number 100 is going to be returned. Well, 100 is a literal. Well, it might not make sense to return 100 here. What I'm trying to show is that you have the option of returning a literal within non-void methods. And so we see if we were to run this, we would get 100. And the last option is probably one of the most common options for non-void methods, and that is an expression. And we have the mathematical expression of num1 plus num2. Well, you say, wait a second, I'm already doing that up here, and then I'm doing it again. Well, you'd be correct. We're duplicating it, and we actually do not need this line right here. It's doing nothing for the program, because when it prints out, it's going to print 30, and it's getting 30 by adding these two numbers together. So if we remove this statement right here, it's going to give us the exact same output. A lot of times, all you're going to see in a method is a return statement and a variable that you're returning, an expression that you're returning, or even a literal that you're returning. If I wanted to do the exact same thing with a second method, and instead of adding two numbers together, I wanted to subtract two numbers together, let's see how that would work. I would do the exact same thing except for I've called the method sub r instead of add r and in the return statement I've added a mathematical expression num1 minus num2. And if we were to call that method over here inside of a system out print line statement it would give us 10 because 20 minus 10 is 10. And so that gives us an idea of how non-void methods are written and how particularly that return statement can be utilized. Let's say that I wanted to add those two functions together. I wanted to both add and subtract num1 and num2 in the exact same method. How could I do that? Beginning programmers might think that you could do this. Return num1 minus num2. Return num1 plus num2. Unfortunately, if we were to run this, we would get an error saying unreachable statement. Using multiple return statements in this way is not allowed. Once you hit a return, it's like hitting a stop sign. The method is going to return what it says, and it cannot continue on to the next code. Therefore, that's why we get the unreachable statement error. 
There is a way to use multiple return statements inside of a method, but you can't do them like this. And let me show you an example of where it is possible. I've written two classes, one called interview and one called interview runner. What we're going to do is have an interview and the interviewee is going to receive a score. The score in this case is a five. Then we're going to say the applicant score is five. And then it's going to come over here and recommend whether we should hire the person or not. And it's going to be based off a series of if statements. And the if statements you can see here all have the keyword return inside of them. So hopefully you can see why this is a valid use of the return keyword, because only if this statement is true, is it going to return this value inside of here. If they get a five or higher, which we see that they get a five, the applicant is extremely well qualified. That's what we wanted to print out. So let's go back to the main method and see how we would utilize this method that we have just written. So we would get the response by calling the method and then we're going to print out the response. So it should say applicant score five and the response should say the applicant is extremely well qualified. Unfortunately, we would get an error. And this is another frustrating error, especially for beginning programmers. And that is because it's going to say you have a missing return statement. And you might want to get really frustrated here because you want to yell at the computer. Hey computer, can't you see that I have one, two, three, four, five? I have five return statements here. How could you give me an error saying missing return statement? Well, the reason why it's giving you that is because what if all of these possibilities were false? what would it do? Well, the computer wouldn't know what to do. It wouldn't have anything to return. It doesn't know that we've considered all possibilities. And it just says, I have to know that it's going to return something when it's done. So if you have a series of if statements like this using multiple return statements, you must have one return statement outside of the if statements to indicate what happens if everything above is false. And so I've done that here to say it should not reach here. So logically, it should not reach past these five return statements because all numbers fit within those ranges. But if it happened to do that, I would get the string returning it should not reach here. And I know I'd have a problem inside of my code. Because I have that last return statement there, I will no longer get the missing return statement error and it will print out exactly as I expected. Applicant score five and the applicant is extremely well qualified. Now there is some debate in the programming world about having multiple return statements. Convention says you shouldn't do it, but a lot of programmers then ask why? And there are some reasons like if you're debugging, it's harder for the debugger if you're using a logger, but for the most part, there's not a really good reason not to have multiple return statements. If you want to learn about the debate more, just type in multiple return statements and you'll read all about the pros and cons of using multiple return statements. But you might be in an environment in the future, whether it's your teacher and you're learning Java, or whether it's your boss who says you have to follow all the standards, who says that you cannot use multiple return statements. You have to have SESE, which stands for single entry, single exit meaning there's only one exit or only one return statement. And so how would we accomplish that? Well, the code would look something like this. So I've instantiated an object of the string class called output, and then output would be assigned to empty quotes, and then it would go through, pick out the correct score, and once the score has been picked out, then at the end of the method, it would return whatever the correct output is. And in the example before on the previous slide, notice this gets rid of that error that says missing return statement. If you only have one and it's in the end, you're guaranteed that your code is going to return something and you're not gonna get that error. In this video, I've tried to show you both ways. First, having multiple return statements or just having one return statement at the end that's going to handle everything above it. In order to understand a non-void method, you need to understand a void method. And a void method simply means no data is going to go back to the calling method. Whereas a non-void method means data will be going back to the calling method. It's important that that data that's being returned is matching the return type. You can't have an int being returned as a string or a string being returned as an int. It will throw an error. 
you have some options in what you write inside of a return statement. It can be a variable, like sum. It can be a literal, like we showed 100. Or it can be an expression, like num1 plus num2. All of those are valid operations or statements to be put after a return keyword. If multiple returns are used, be sure one is guaranteed to execute. If you have a series of if statements that all have returns inside of them, it's going to throw an error even if you've thought about every possibility. Java wants to know 100% that that method is going to return something. And if you do not have a default return or a return at the end, Java is going to throw an error. A method cannot return two values using two return keywords. There are ways to return multiple values, maybe using an array or array list or something like that. But there is no way to say, OK, I want to return these two values added together, and then on the next line, return one subtracted from the other. If you try to use two return statements like that, it is going to throw an error that's going to say unreachable statement. And finally, a return method stops the execution of a method. So once it hits that return statement, it doesn't continue on with the code. It stops there, returns whatever is necessary, and then the main program or whatever method is calling that particular method will continue on with its code. As we showed in the interview example, if the job interview was a five, it would return they're extremely well qualified. It would not go any further into the program to check whether it's a four, a three, a two, or anything less than that. We've just added non-void methods into your toolkit, and we've shown their connection with the return type. The question is then going to become, when do I use void methods and when do I use non-void methods? Well, that's going to be over a matter of course and just learning the advantages and the disadvantages of both. But for now, you know the syntax, you know how it works, and you know its functionality, and that's going to go a long way in utilizing and understanding non-void methods. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.